Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you how you can solve this question. So we have the following function f, which consists of a matrix sigma and a vector alpha. And here I assume that vector alpha is a row vector. And what we need to determine is the derivative of f with respect to the vector alpha 1. So let me show you how you can do this. So note that with the derivative of a function f with respect to a vector, I mean the vector that contains the derivative of f with respect to the first component of alpha, then the second component of alpha, and so on. So it means that with this derivative, I'm looking at the column vector where first we have the derivative of f with respect to alpha 1, 1, then the derivative of f with respect to alpha 1, 2, and so on, all the way to the derivative of f with respect to alpha 1, n. So this means that if I need to calculate this derivative, I need to determine the derivative of f with respect to one of the components of alpha. So first we determine the derivative of f with respect to some alpha 1 k. Because if I have this derivative, then I can make the derivative of the function f with respect to the vector alpha. So note that f is having two terms. So we start with the term the vector alpha 1 times the matrix sigma times the transpose of alpha which I can write as follows. First of all, let's have a look at this part here. So I'm doing the vector alpha 1 times a matrix um, sigma is this one, sigma 1, 1, sigma 1, 2, and so on. This is my matrix sigma that I have to multiply with the column vector alpha because I have the alpha transpose. So I write it in this way. So I keep this first one, and then I do the multiplication of sigma times alpha, which gives you, it gives you a column vector, with in the first column you have the sum of, of this one multiplied with all the alphas, then the second component is these sigmas multiplied with the same alphas, and so on. And this is what you find. Then I use that alpha is a row vector. It's alpha 1, 1, alpha 1, 2, all the way to alpha 1, n. Then I now have to multiply with this vector column vector that we determined by multiplying sigma with alpha 1 transpose. It's this multiplication, which means that we find that this is equal to, I have a sum, because I take each of these elements multiplied with these elements. And this is what we then find. So the alpha 1 sigma alpha 1 prime is equal to this expression. On the previous slide, we proved this expression. We proved that this matrix multiplication can be written with this summation. And also recall that we are looking at the derivative of f with respect to alpha 1 k. But if you look at this double sum, we have in the outer sum, we have one time alpha 1k in this summation, and then in the inner sum each time there is one element alpha 1k here. So in order to make taking the derivative a bit easier, I'm going to split that sum such that I know where is the alpha 1k. For example, the first sum I have i from 1 to n alpha 1i, but now I'm going to exclude the case where i is equal to k. And then I keep this sum. 
because now I know that in this first sum, the alpha k is only in this inner summation. Because I do not take into account i equal to k, I need to consider the situation where i is equal to k separately. It means that I have a sum j1 to n with all the alpha 1k elements. I find something like this. In this second sum, we have alpha 1k, which is multiplied by alpha 1j, where j runs from 1 to n. So again, there's 1j where we have alpha 1k times alpha 1k. So I'm going to again split the sum in two parts. So I keep the first sum. And in this second sum, I take j from 1 to n, but j cannot be equal to k. So we have to add the term where j is equal to 1, because if j, uh, j is equal to k, because if j is equal to k, I have alpha 1k to the power 2 times sigma k k. And now I can take the derivative. So now I take the derivative of this expression alpha 1 sigma alpha 1 prime with respect to alpha 1k. And we have that this expression here consists of three different parts and the derivative of a sum is a sum of the derivative so I can write the following. Where here I use that a derivative of a double sum is a double sum of the derivatives, and here I use that the derivative of a sum is again a sum of derivatives. And each of these derivatives are easy to calculate, so then I find the following expression. Note that I use that this here, we take the sum of the derivatives, but all the derivatives are zero, because the derivative of, say, alpha 1, 1, with respect to alpha 1, k, if k is not equal to 1, it's zero. This derivative, this one here, it's only non-zero if j is equal to k. So that's why we find this expression. If you have a look, you see that this sum here, and this sum here, they are the same. It's just that one sum runs over i and the other one runs over j. But for the rest, they are the same. So I can merge the two so to find that this is two times the same sum. Note that here also we use that sigma i k is equal to sigma k j because the sigma is a variance covariance matrix. So we have a symmetric matrix there. And I keep the second term as it is. And then we put this term back into the summation to find the following. I have a sum that just runs from 1 to n. I first exclude the k, but here is the term with i equal to k, so I put these together to find this expression. If I then want to calculate this derivative, so it's the same function alpha 1 times sigma alpha 1 prime, but now I take the derivative with respect to alpha 1. Then because this is equal to a vector with all the components-wise derivatives, This is the derivative we are looking at, but from the previous slide, we know that the first term is equal to And then you can verify that this is actually the same as the following matrix operation. It's two times the sigma matrix times the alpha one vector 
transposed. So we find that this derivative is equal to this expression. The second part of the function f is this um, penalty function for my um, condition that the alpha one should have norm one. So I also need to calculate the derivative of lambda alpha one times alpha one prime minus one with respect to alpha one k. But this here, I can rewrite as a summation, so I find the following. If I take the derivative with respect to alpha 1k, I just need to look for the element where i is equal to k, because all other derivatives are equal to zero. And this is what we find. Or if we take the derivative of this thing with respect to the vector alpha 1, we have that this is equal to 2 times lambda, the vector alpha 1 prime. The function f in alpha 1 was given by this expression, which means that the derivative of f with respect to alpha 1 is given by the difference of two derivatives. And we calculated the two derivatives, so we find 2 times sigma alpha 1 prime for the first one, and 2 times lambda alpha 1 prime for the second one, or as we had in the exercise, 2 times sigma alpha 1 prime minus lambda alpha 1 prime. And this concludes the exercise.